All right, well, hello everyone and welcome to the second in a series of webinars brought to you by Tilia Labs. I'm George Follickman, Director of Sales and Business Development for Tilia Labs, and I'm joined by my colleague, Tyler Thompson, Global Director of Solutions and Technologies. Today, we'll be digging into the world of wide format. We will explore the ways we can practically apply Industry 4.0 technology to our business. We're joined today by exciting guests from our technology partner, Zoomed. Uh, we have with us today, Heather Roden, Strategic Account Manager for Graphics and Packaging. And she's joined by her colleague, Justin Davis, Applications Manager. Heather, would you like to take a moment and introduce yourself? Good morning. Thank you so much for including us in this event. Um, I did wanna share with everyone that Zoomed and Tilia both have the same corporate philosophy when it comes to development, open is better. Serving print service providers with an open environment can only help us all to bring the manufacturing of print into a future that embraces Industry 4.0. While Zoomed has long shared its open API with RIP and workflow partners, Tilia in particular has captured an element of available data from our Zoom systems in conjunction with other equipment that makes production planning and estimating more efficient and accurate than ever before. And to give a little bit of history in, in Zoom and explain how this is occurring, um, each Zoom, which is running Zoom Cut Center, has an extensive material database <clears throat> of over 50 materials and their best finishing parameters. And that's right out of the box. Not to mention the multiple custom profiles you may have created in your own environment. Now, many of you will, will recall that with Zoom Cut Center version two is where cut time estimation became enabled. And so now this is what Tilia is utilizing in the software to generate estimations to give a full view as to how to best estimate a project or production plan. If you're wondering how can these estimations be so accurate and not just mere guesstimations, understand that Zoomed R&D developed their own motors, motion controllers, software, and firmware, often side by side in the same office. So each little enhancement of this system that occurs along the way can be accurately accounted for in projection of operation rather than digital cutting equipment, which relies on third party development. Awesome, thanks Heather. So this is intended to be an interactive event. Please feel free to use the Q and A functions of Zoom to ask questions. Our panelists will answer them in real time at the end of the presentation. Uh, if you enjoy today's event, please visit sales.tillylabs.com slash events to see our upcoming webinar lineup. Without any further ado, I'll pass it off to Tyler. Great, thanks George. Is my, uh, George, can you confirm my screen still being shared? Yeah, we can see your screen. Perfect. All right, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, looks like we have 17 countries being represented today. So crazy. I really appreciate everyone's time. As George mentioned, my name is Tyler Thompson. I'm the solutions director here at Tilia Labs. I've uh, been in the industry ever since graduating from Clemson University uh, in the graphics program. Um, and I also hold a master's of science degree in computer information systems from Denver University. I'm based still here in uh, South Carolina, so if there are any Clemson alum on the webinar, go Tigers. And if you have any questions or want to reach out, feel free to, to shoot me an email. Um, my email is tyler at tilialabs.com. So our agenda for today's webinar, we're gonna start with just a quick introduction of Tilia Labs. Then we'll move into talking about what is the internet of things. What is this whole IOT uh, term that's being used and thrown around a lot. Then we'll move into an introduction of Tilia Phoenix's nesting 
and include a demo of our new IoT integration with our technology partner, Zoom. And then at the end, we'll save the last 15 minutes or so for Q&A, where you'll be able to uh, ask questions. In fact, during the webinar, as we're, as we're progressing through the slides um, and through the demos, you feel free to just uh, text over um, or, or chat in your questions, and our panelists will be able to uh, respond to them, or we'll save them and, and answer them live in the Q&A session at the end. So a little bit about Tilia Labs. Tilia Labs is a software company. We don't develop any hardware. We're not tied to hardware. In fact, um, we pride ourselves in our, our open software platform um, and working with technology partners like Zoomed um, who are able to integrate with our software through their open API architecture. So we're just a software company. And recently, uh, this past Intertech, um, we received an award for our true AI technology, which is what we're going to talk about a bit today. So we're a software company founded in April 2012, relatively newer to the, to the industry. We're based in Ottawa, Canada. We have a development uh, and QA team of uh, developers that sit in Toronto, Canada, and we also have a dev and QA team in Tokyo, Japan. And then here in the US where, where myself and my colleague George are based, we also have a team of uh, support and sales. So we're a small, highly skilled group of, of developers. Um, and year to date, we've grown extremely fast, just over 500 licenses sold uh, year to date. And we've done that through our excellent uh, distributing partners and resellers in, in over 32 countries. And I can see over half of our, uh, our customer base um, in countries are represented here on this webinar. So it's really exciting. So welcome everyone. And thank you for your continued, uh, if you're new, um, welcome. If you're uh, an existing customer, thank you for your so our product mix, um, today we're gonna focus just on Tilia Phoenix, which is our flagship product. We also have additional webinars um, that you can find on sales.tilialabs.com slash events, where we'll talk about our subset products. Um, we have a, a product called Tilia Griffin that's focused for a subset of Phoenix, which is focused in sign in wide format. Tilia Aries, which is our label step and repeat tool. Um, which is focused on, uh, on, on digital labels and step and repeat, and then um, Tilia Cloud, which is our cloud licensing platform. Uh, but today we're gonna focus on Phoenix and um, talk a little bit about Internet of Things and how Phoenix is now understanding this concept of, of IoT. So IoT is all around us, right? When we ask what is Internet of Things or what is IoT, we see it everywhere. Um, it's, it's listening to you in, in many cases. Um, it's buying your, purchasing your groceries through Amazon. Um, it's playing your music uh, with, with Siri. Um, we see it in our refrigerators. We see it in our kitchens. We see it through home security. IoT is capturing data in real time uh, everywhere around us. And we see it in our personal lives, but, you know, we're always kind of scratching our head. Like why, you know, if, if, IoT is helping us in our personal lives be more productive uh, and more efficient. Why don't we see this translating into um, our particular printing and packaging in, in wide format space? Um, we see it in pharmaceuticals, right? With track and trace. Uh, we see it with um, the farmers in, in self-driving cars and in vehicles um, where these devices are, are talking and understanding um, using data to make decisions. And we see it in safety and manufacturing with, with wearables. Um, and even further, we, we hear a lot about IoT when it comes to predictive maintenance, where these devices are capturing vibration and, and heat and movement data in real time to make better decisions on when they're gonna break down. Um, and this concept of, of kind of continuous data collection in, in IoT has introduced this concept of, of ZDT or zero downtime for, for equipment manufacturers. But, you know, if, if we see IoT a lot, both in, in personal lives, and we do see it in, in other industries, but how is this being applied in, in wide format and in our printing and packaging space that we're in? So this problem of estimating and planning um, is 
typically a manual process. So when, when we kind of bring this back into uh, the, the printing and packaging space, this, this problem and uh, this challenging problem of, of estimating and planning several orders is typically done in, in programs like Illustrator or um, in some cases, like you see in the, in the photo here, manually with a, a human kind of piecing orders together on a, on a larger sheet to see how many can fit. And in many cases, um, you know, a, a customer or, or a, um, a planner and an estimator is going to look at the bounding box of an order and, you know, have an idea of rough machine speeds and use Excel to kind of calculate how many sheets or how many boards and how long that's going to take in production. And this process is, is manual and takes, in, in many cases, many hours or, or sometimes several days to estimate and plan production. And because of its complexity, uh, we find that the industry in many cases is just kind of dealing with jobs one at a time. As a job comes in, that job then gets, gets planned by an estimator or a planner. Um, and mixing jobs is typically challenging. So if we take a look at this in, in a kind of a higher level, more graphical view, um, you know, looking at the outer bounding box of an order, we've got a, we've got a box here that we need to, uh, or an order that we need to produce. And the outer bounding box is 18 by 15 inches and the customer has ordered this, um, this particular box for a quantity of 500. So then the question is, well, okay, how long, how many sheets is this gonna take? How much material is this gonna cost? And how long is it gonna take on my printing press? And furthermore, how long is it gonna take uh, in finishing to cut this out? So if you're doing the math quickly in your head, um, which is hard, uh, you'll find that with the outer dimensions, you're going to get about 18 of these orders up on a sheet. And if the customer ordered 500 of these, um, that means we're going to need to print 28 sheets. And our printing press has a, has a speed of, uh, of about 25 sheets or 25 uh, print beds an hour. And um, that allows us to understand and predict the, the press time. It's a very predictable um, speed with, with a press, with a printing press. Now the question is, um, how long is this going to take to cut and finish, right? That's always the, the big question mark. So typically what we find is there's this kind of rough complexity calculation that's happening to try and figure out this big question mark of how long is it going to take to cut and finish my job. So, you know, in, in a lot of cases, we'll find that um, a customer will select some kind of uh, complexity based on the, the rule and the, the amount of cut and how many, you know, angles are in that cut. So we'll say it, it's going to be a high complexity job and this is going to take about 10 inches, you know, per second to, to finish. So then if we tally all of that up, um, go into Illustrator and look at the amount of, of rule or lines of cut you'll see that it's gonna take us about one hour and 15 minutes total time um, to cut and finish and print this job. But then the question is, well, okay, if we don't just use our, the outer bounding box, um, we can actually get more up on a sheet. So instead of 18 up on a sheet, we now, if we use the true shape, can get 24 up on a sheet. And that means we're going to be, you know, spending less time on press because we have less sheets to print, but we've now increased our finishing time, right? Because now per, per sheet or per board, we've increased the amount of time that it's going to take to cut. So this problem, as you can quickly start to realize, is challenging for a printer or converter to plan production with digital finishing. Um, furthermore, if we try and estimate this over several orders, uh, on several different materials across several different presses and different finishing equipment, the problem gets compounded even higher and becomes more and more complex. And that's because we've got several printers, we've got several uh, different ways of cutting, um, several different equipment configurations, right? And when we think about all of these different possible combinations uh, to run our job, it becomes an astronomical search base uh, to try and solve. And that's typically why we see uh, our customers dealing with one job at a time. So why, why is this important? Well, uh, the price of raw materials, every, you know, the, the raw materials that we're printing and converting on is not going down, but rather it's, it's only going up 
So our plastics, our, our corrugated, um, our paperboard, our chipboard, um, the cost of raw materials is, is simply increasing. Um, and, you know, our run lengths are getting shorter. We're getting an increased number of SKUs and pressure from our brands or our customers to turn these jobs around faster and at, at less cost. And then furthermore, um, especially with, with today, uh, there's a greater market investment in general in technology in, in trying to move more and more of our jobs to the cloud, more of our work remote, um, and this concept of ordering, you know, print in, in um, signs through the web, through web to print technologies. So we can't continue relying on this kind of archaic manual way of, of uh, human planning, right? Bringing all of our orders into Illustrator or or you know, moving them around on a on a on a sheet to try and figure out how many can fit um, to accurately predict our costs. So this is where uh, we've been spending all of our time and development in our product Tilia Phoenix in solving this problem. And today, uh, Phoenix is now with our our technology uh, integration with uh, our technology partner Zoom. Um, Phoenix is now the first industry's first IoT enabled estimating and planning algorithm. So with an open platform uh, of our technology partner Zoom and Phoenix's ability to talk directly to a device, we've now um, have the uh, ability to talk to the Zoom cut center and return true cut time estimates back into Phoenix to solve this problem. So if we take a look at how this works, um, we start in the Zoom Cut Center. And on the Zoom Cut Center, Zoom has a material database um, of, over five, uh, of over 50 plus materials with predefined cutting parameters of, of the industry's most uh, common materials. And because as uh, you heard from Heather uh, at the beginning, because Zoom has, um, uh, has has built all of the um, uh, motion controls and, and software on their device. Um, they've got uh, the ability to have a high, highly accurate um, uh, automated control simulation to predict accurately predict the cut time. And because Zoom has an open API architecture, uh, as does uh, Tilia Labs, we have the ability to connect directly to this device. So in Zoom Cut Center, you have your material database. Inside of Phoenix, you can now, spe you can now add a device. Um, so in Phoenix, at the bottom left there, you can uh, make Phoenix aware of your, your Zoom, uh, one or many Zoom tables. And in the estimation engine, you simply navigate or point uh, Phoenix to the IP address of the Zoom Cut Center. As soon as you click OK, a connection will be made with the Zoom Cut Center, which enables Phoenix the ability now to talk directly to the Zoom device. So as we are uh, generating the nested layouts and returning results in our user interface, you can see Phoenix is uh, taking that uh, uh, geometry, cut geometry information, sending that over to Zoom, and in real time getting feedback uh, via IoT and how long it's going to take to cut. So Phoenix now not only understands and models the, the print time, but also um, based on the order and the quantities and, and the nesting of those orders, uh, sends the geometry data to Zoom to get cut time information directly back into the user interface. Once we've connected uh, or made Phoenix aware of the Zoom device, um, we get the true cut time estimation directly back into the, into the interface. So we'll take a deep dive. First, we're going to start with a uh, wide format job um, inside of Phoenix and look at how Phoenix handles a typical wide format order. So in Phoenix, we're going to start by importing a CSV file. And um, in, inside of Phoenix, Phoenix has the ability to consume uh, out of the box a CSV order sheet, which is what you see on screen here. And in this order sheet, you can see we've specified some parameters of the order, like the order quantity, the material that the customer ordered this on. And this uh, order sheet is, is a, a typical order sheet that would come out of your, your business system or your web to print system. So with that order sheet Phoenix has brought in, you can see all 64 items of this particular customer's order. And now we're going to 
uh, ask Phoenix to generate our uh, print in, in cut files using our nesting algorithms to figure out the most cost effective way to take these orders with their given quantities across our two different um, sheet sizes and ask Phoenix to run a cost-based analysis and generate the, uh, the print in, in the nested cut files. So when I say go, you can see Phoenix begins searching the, the large search base of different possible combinations and continues to report results, nested results. And what Phoenix is doing at this point is trying to reduce both the, the print time and, and the material consumption by packing uh, the orders tighter to reduce material costs and reduce time on press. So you can see uh, the result of Phoenix after about 20 or, or 30 seconds there, we, we got a, a number of different results to choose from. And Phoenix, you know, consumed the order uh, and the quantity of, of what the customer ordered and figured out the number of print layouts, their copy count, and how long it's going to take on press and the, num the total number of, of of boards that's gonna be required to fulfill this order. So if we take a look, what Phoenix has done is not only figured out the, uh, the costing and, and how many uh, sheets and boards, but also has generated the fully imposed print ready uh, print and in, in cut file. So we've got the marks, we've got the barcode information specified on, on each individual sheet. But we, what you can see here is Phoenix to, to maximize uh, the cost took the um, orders and, and comboed them together on uh, different layouts. So if I just scroll back a little bit, um, Phoenix uh, aggressively was, was uh, nesting these, these items together in, in, in this scenario here, mixing orders on uh, the same sheet. So what we're gonna do now is take that same job and add a little bit of logic here just to show you some of the functionality with Phoenix. Um, I'm gonna import that CSV file, but instead of uh, mixing my orders on the sheet, on my sheets, I want Phoenix to keep orders together by their job. So now I'm passing the job number as a property um, for each of my components. And you can see here from that CSV file, I'm just asking Phoenix to, to group these together by job. So now I expect all of the reds, you can see over here on the, on the groups, uh, in the properties here, the reds are uh, group one, job one, the orange is job two. Um, so now once Phoenix has the uh, orders in groups, we can add rules inside of Phoenix um, and ask Phoenix to now create uh, a rule to keep our orders together by our job number. And this is gonna help in scenarios where uh, on the finishing end, when you're shipping and, and palletizing the uh, orders coming off of your finishing equipment, your Zoom, for example, you wanna keep some kind of logical order so it's easier for your um, finishing department to pack and, and, and ship the orders based on, on jobs. So, um, you can see we can add as many planning rules uh, as we want to specify. So you can keep things together by, for example, zip code or uh, shipping date or due date or store name, or um, this is where you can add all the logic to Phoenix to uh, extend its functionality. But in this scenario, I'm just gonna group it together by job. And now you'll see Phoenix will take and use the same true shape nesting algorithm, but instead of mixing jobs together, um, we're gonna incur a little bit more cost here um, because Phoenix isn't able to mix uh, and pack as tightly together because of the constraints of, of the job. However, um, this is gonna make it a lot more efficient coming off of our Zoomed or coming off of our finishing equipment uh, to ship and palletize by keeping it together by order. And then the last demo here, I'm gonna run through the same wide format job, but now we're gonna show our new IoT integration with, uh, with Zoom. So inside of Phoenix, now you can see I'm gonna run a, a simulation um, and drag my CSV order sheet uh, right into Phoenix. And um, I've got my items pulled into Phoenix. I'm gonna run InPosition AI. And now this time I'm going to specify both a print uh, printer and a cutter. So my page wide C500 as well as our Zoom uh, G3. 
And as I start running these results, Phoenix again is going to start generating um, all of the different, uh, continue suggesting different permutations on nesting. And you can see the pending uh, up here on the, on the top right. That's because we're waiting for results to come back from the Zoom Prep Center. And as soon as we get responses back from Zoom, you'll see the pending will get dropped and the true cut times are gonna pop up. Um, there we go pop up into the user interface. So now we know that this has been a, a Zoom verified um, cut time. And Phoenix, you'll see, continues to start generating different results. We've got about 32 different uh, scenarios here in, in about a minute. And send those results. Uh, continue to ask Zoom if this is a more or less optimized way of uh, imposing these items on a sheet. So this, this constant chatter back and forth with Phoenix and, and Zune uh, allows Phoenix to become even smarter with the way that it's optimizing and, and laying out our items to reduce the amount of, uh, of, of time you're going to be on your cutting table. Furthermore, the material that's specified um, uh, from the order sheet when you're asking Zune uh, or, or allowing Phoenix to generate these results, we're passing that information directly to Zune so that Zoomed is then picking up the correct uh, cutting information based on your materials database. So there we go. Not only has Phoenix now figured out um, the most cost effective way of, of printing, but also in, in uh, imposing, but also we've got feedback on, on cutting time and print time to get a true understanding of, of how long this uh, particular order is going to take in both printing and finishing. If we scoot a little bit further along here. I'm going to apply this result. And if you do have automation on your Zoomed, um, both with uh, either feeders or stackers or barcode enabled um, readers on your Zoom, we generate the, the Zoom certified barcode uh, for automation purposes and for grabbing the correct cut file to reduce human error, as well as exporting a ZCC file, which passes uh, over additional information to the Zoom Cut Center to auto-specify the material, to grab the right settings for the material on the Zoom Cut Center, as well as the copy count um, so that your operator uh, or so that Zoom is aware of how many of these particular items or um, sheets it can expect based on the, the, the Zoom um, ZCC file. So just to wrap up here, um, Phoenix, you know, we, we focused a lot on, on IoT, um, but outside of uh, the IoT enablement of, of you know, um, the print and, and cut file generation and uh, estimation and planning, Phoenix also provides benefits of uh, handling like recto verso for the front and back, the tiling like you see uh, in the left to generate tiles um, for wide format scenarios. Um, linking directly to your MIS system via the CSV file. Uh, so just being able to drag and drop the CSV file right into Phoenix to auto uh, populate Phoenix with information about the order, the quantity of the order, the, the material. Um, and then of course, uh, the uh, direct IoT integration with Zoom so that we have a, a perfect understanding of not only the print, um, but also of uh, how long it's gonna take in, in finishing to run these cost-based optimization um, um, results uh, directly at your fingertips. So I'll end there and ask uh, if there are any questions in the chat. We've got about 15 minutes here um, to answer questions. Yeah, Tyler, uh, fantastic presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you for running us through that. Uh, we actually have uh, quite a few questions coming into the Q&A, and I'll remind uh, everyone else, if, if uh, you don't know, there's a little Q&A uh, button at the bottom of the Zoom screen uh, that you can, can ask questions. You can ask them uh, privately or uh, open into the forum. Uh, so we've got a, a few that ca uh, came in right away. Um, we've got a, a couple people asking um, if this uh, works with any other devices. Um, besides Zoom uh, Cut Center? Yeah, so um, our first release with uh, our version 7.0, the T integration um, uh, 
uh, was with Zoomed. However, we envision um, connecting to, um, you know, our, our, our roadmap is connecting with all device manufacturers, uh, both in finishing, um, but also in, in printing and, uh, you know, even outside of uh, uh, the, the digital finishing equipment, right? So connecting directly to um, the printers to understand uh, additional information about print speed, et cetera, but also um, steel rule uh, die cutters and, and equipment around uh, other equipment outside of, of finishing, you know, um, die cutters and guillotine cutters, et cetera. So, but today, yeah, our, our uh, release of, of device IoT is um, uh, with Zoom. Awesome. Uh, we've got a couple questions about, um, well, let's see, is, is Phoenix a Mac-based or a PC-based uh, solution? So, yep, Phoenix, the application runs both on uh, Mac OS and Windows. And then if you are running in our automation mode, we, we can also run on uh, Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. So it's a cross-platform application. Awesome. Uh, there was a question about um, if you need a die file in the artwork, or how is how is Phoenix understanding the the true shape uh, of an item as as it's being pulled into the interface? Oh uh, yeah, good question. So when Phoenix, when you pull in an, an item uh, into Phoenix, we've got a um, both a. a we can understand a, a die, so a, a CF2 or DXF or DDES, any of the standard um, CAD file formats uh, can be used. Um, but if you have artwork, like a, a PDF, for example, like we were showing in the demo, um, inside of Phoenix's preference, you can map those um, lines to what we call line types. So we can extract uh, and map inside of Phoenix, like uh, die, the, a spot color called die line or a spot color called cut um, and uh, identify the shapes based on um, uh, spot color separations. And we can also do the same type of mapping with layers. So both spot colors and layers in a PDF, uh, as well as the industry standard um, CAD file formats, right? PDF, die lines, uh, CF2, DXF, DDES. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Um, let's see here. There's a, a lot of questions. They're really good. So thank you, everyone. Um, are we able to group? So we, we showed uh, the, the functionality in, in Phoenix of being able to group, uh, group our layouts uh, by job. Uh, are we able to group based on any other parameters, for instance, uh, maybe ink coverage or uh, color or um, yeah, well, uh, some, some other parameters? Yeah, so you can pass Phoenix um, any parameter uh, when you're uploading your product. So um, I know in, in the demo we went pretty fast, but when you're, when you're uploading a product, uh, you can pass um, virtually any uh, an unlimited number of, of product properties, which can then be used um, in our imposition AI tool uh, as logic for um, uh, plan rules here. I'm going to go ahead and just start sharing my screen. So in, in the plan rules, yeah, you can, you can group things together by, by color. You can group things together by any custom text, integer, number, Boolean, date field um, that you pass from, from your MIS system. Uh, furthermore, we can keep things in strips and, and have additional logic around colors or varnishes or foils um, to make Phoenix uh, that keep, keep items in, in, in order and, and sequence things in, in uh, very interesting ways for, for finishing and to save, of course, cost in, in, um, in production. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, there's a handful of questions here, Tyler, about um, integrating with uh, either MIS systems or some other workflow components. Uh, is there an easy way to plug Phoenix into uh, existing uh, workflows or, or to have it connect with uh, your MIS system? Yeah, good question. So um, we've got uh, several forms of automation. Um, 
our, our uh, most open and uh, robust way of, of integrating with other business systems is through our um, API. So we've got a fully documented API. Everything that was done in the demo today can be facilitated through REST API calls. So very easy to drive Phoenix in an automated fashion. We also have um, inside of Phoenix the ability to set up uh, hot folders. So um, we have a, our, our RESTful web service, which I showed. Uh, we have the ability to add custom hot folders, which can include you know, scripting and uh, JavaScript. And then we also have a switch connector. So any of, our, any of uh, the customers who have Enfocus Switch also have the ability to connect directly through a switch configurator to make it easy to pass switch variables. And then just like I was showing in, in, the, in the demo, the most basic kind of form of integration, uh, which comes out of the box uh, standard with Phoenix is through CSVs, CSV files. So you can just drag a CSV file directly into the Phoenix uh, user interface and um, uh, bring all the data in from any, really any business system at that point to make it faster um, to set up and, and define all of your quantities and, and order information. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I got a year. I, I do want to, well, I guess I'll ask this to you, Tyler. Um, uh, the IoT integration, that is exclusive with uh, Zun currently. That's uh, the only device that we're, we're talking to. But what about uh, outputting? What, what devices and file types um, are we able to, uh, to output to? Yeah, so um, Phoenix, when it's when it's generating um, its uh, its results, um, both the the print file and the cut file. So for for printing, uh, we can export the um, the the PDF, which will get sent directly to your your RIP. Um, so a, a fully imposed print ready PDF. We can also export uh, JDF files uh, for print. So if you have a JDF enabled either workflow or device, um, we can export the, the print JDF. And then for cutting, um, <clears throat> we write, uh, because of our, our relationship with Zoom, we, we do have uh, the ZCC file format that we export, which contains a, a ton of um, metadata. Um, and then just for industry standard, other either cutting tables or other finishing equipment, we export the native uh, or, or industry standard CFF2 DXF um, PDF or cutting JDF for guillotine cutters uh, to automate the, the cutting on guillotine cutters. Awesome. I'm going to ask uh, one more question and I'm going to preface this question uh, by letting uh, the folks who are on this webinar who are uh, um, producing digital corrugated uh, and any of our, our CAD based uh, Customers, um, I, I would invite you to also join um, our webinar on, I believe it's uh, April 24, um, that is specifically geared towards uh, digital corrugated. Uh, but the question is, can Phoenix plan on standing dies? Uh, and can it estimate the cost um, of maybe cutting uh, digitally versus uh, cutting it on a uh, conventional die cutting equipment? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, so it can. Uh, it, Phoenix is aware of and can inventory steel rule dies in our die database and also evaluate cost, <clears throat> excuse me, um, evaluate the cost of um, on that on the finishing equipment um, of setting up a die um, of building a die based on um, the uh, based on all of the different steel rule die uh, line types. So you can come in here and model um, your costing. So 40 inch per 40 cents per linear inch of rule, for example, and set that up for all of your your line types, and then estimate and figure out what would this cost if I were to run it on on a steel rule die cutter, rotary die cutter, versus say running it on my Zoom, and what's going to be the difference in, in cost and time. Um, so yep, you can do definitely do it with uh, with steel rule dies. Awesome. Well, um, yeah, we are uh, starting to run out of time, and there are quite a few questions uh, still unanswered. So if you did ask a question, uh, try our hardest to uh, kind of sort these questions out and uh, 
answer them uh, for you in, in a follow-up uh, email to this webinar. So thank you everyone for, uh, for the, the fantastic engagement. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that's just about all the time we have for today. So uh, first I wanna thank, a, a, you know, extend a big thank you to Zun uh, for graciously participating in, th in this event. Uh, and of course, a bigger thank you uh, to all of you who uh, took some time out of your day to join us. Uh, if you found this presentation interesting, please visit sales.tillylabs.com slash events. We've got a few upcoming webinars that are going to take an even deeper dive into some of our other segments, uh, such as, as I mentioned, digital corrugated. Uh, we've got a, a session for commercial printers. Uh, we have a session upcoming for cartons and labels. So uh, yeah, sign up for those if, uh, if you're interested. Thank you, everyone, and have a fantastic rest of the day.